So I'm here to talk about uh, PowerPoint and its creation, uh, but before I can really talk about uh, PowerPoint in 1984, what we were thinking, I have to describe how presentations were given at the time. And uh, one of the methods was uh, used was 35 millimeter slides in large auditoriums. Uh, and those are, were more, uh, are still around, although not, not really used. The more common method was this device, an overhead projector. And this could be used anywhere. It wasn't very expensive. And uh, schools all had these. And uh, most business offices that did any sort of presentation stuff would have one too. And there's a, a big projector bulb down in the bottom with a fan keeping it cool and a Fresnel lens to distribute the light evenly over the surface. And then it projects the light up through a reflector here, which then projects onto the screen. So these could be used in a moderately lit room so that you didn't have to have a big darkened room like a 35 millimeter uh, slide in an auditorium. Um, in schools, these were often used by uh, teachers that just wrote on the transparency material, which is this kind of material that was just laid over the top. And you could uh, write directly while you were talking. And you, because you had you know, complete freedom to write, draw, do anything else, or even use colored pens, uh, the uh, presentation materials could be anything you wanted. However, they were a little crude. Uh, and more often, uh, for more formal occasions, the slides were made by typing on a uh, typewriter. The, the type was fairly small. And uh, for some typewriters, particularly the IBM typewriter, there was a large print uh, type element that you could get. Uh, that would produce type that was a little taller than normal <laughs> type. And those were used for a lot of presentations, too. Um, then we, PowerPoint could pr uh, create these, this type of presentation material much nicer. And in particular, uh, Apple had a laser printer. This was the dawning days of laser printers, and b well before inkjet printers. So the laser printer uh, produced beautiful, crisp text. But an, it, uh, the typical ones of the day produced very small text, similar to a typewriter. And they had some slightly larger, but uh, it was still a lot like just a very nice typewritten slide. Uh, the Apple Laser Writer, which uh, came out in 80, 85, I think, uh, was uh, a postscript device. And because of the postscript, it could produce text at any size, even a letter filling the entire page. And it would have the, the very sharp edged, uh, beautiful text, and complete with styles and so forth. So as PowerPoint uh, came along, there was presentations that looked more like this. So this was a, uh, this is a slide actually produced on PowerPoint. And you'd have this beautiful typeset looking text. Uh, it was still kind of crude because the uh, presenter had to put slides up on the table you know, manually. And little tricks like showing uh, points, bullet points one at a time was usually done by putting a piece of paper over the top of the transparency. And as you talked, sliding down the uh, paper to reveal the points one at a time. This was typically frustrating for the audience because it looked kind of bad. And they were always getting little glimpses of what was coming and then having it covered up and so forth. But that was uh, the way presentations were done. and. Uh, they were black and white because l there was no color laser printing. And there was, uh, in general, color printing was only a very low resolution prospect. So uh, you could get some fairly nice looking black and white slides. Here's one with a, 
a picture of a computer screen from PowerPoint in it. So, uh, but they were limited to black and white, and um, that was good for us because the device we built PowerPoint on was the first Macintosh, which also was only a black and white device. So we couldn't do color on the screen, and we couldn't do color on the laser writer. So I think that's, 